Everyone has aspirations, everyone performs in life, every single person has a big dream deep inside them. My dream was to win the Olympics and inspire some kids. Picture this, beautiful sunny day in the small Italian village high up in the Alps where we had the 2006 Olympic cross country ski race and I was in full skate ski stride. I saw this red line in the snow and I realized I was going to cross it first. If I looked right, the German would pass me on the left. If I looked left, a Russian would pass me on the right. So I just kept a lock on that finish line of my focus. But wait, how did I end up here? I am just a kid from a small mountain town in the Canadian Rockies. And this is my big dream. But I'm only dreaming big because the Olympians have told me to do that. There are Olympic people, you see, and there are normal people. And we dream big because the Olympians tell us to. But really? I did three things to end up in this spot that I'd like to share with you today. Dream big, learn with every step, and believe. Because if you rewind to the start line of that race, this was the battleground for belief in my mind, turning up the volume on belief. If you rewind even further, a few months before the Olympics, I was in a ski race, and I was pushed down by another racer. That was where I had to take a learning step. I had to learn with every step along the way, and that was a very key one that would later enable me to win the Olympics. And rewinding even further to when I was a teenager, to when I was a kid, when I was first introduced to the concept of dream big. I was very fortunate my parents didn't put any boundaries on me. They thought I could do anything, so I did. Not only that, in my hometown in Canmore, I was fortunate enough to know the first North American woman to climb Mount Everest, Sharon Wood. And in a conversation one day, she said, all these countries are trying to get the medals. No one needs medals nearly as badly as we need models, role models. We need those Olympians to stand on those podiums and inspire everyone to dream big. This became part of my big dream. I was inspired and I was inside a circle of inspiration. I was inspired by my parents and now I inspire them. I was inspired by my role models and what could I do to continue to be inspired by the next generation to make a difference specifically make a difference for young women and impact their confidence. I was so lucky to have such good female role models for confidence. So my teammates and I, to do something about this right away, founded Fast and Female. This is an organization dedicated to empowerment through sport for young women. And I started it before I'd had any success. I wasn't an Olympic anything. I was just myself, loving to ski, uh, loving to inspire and be inspired which is an important point because when there's a big dream happening, it's hard to get started. And the right time to start is right now. So I was all in with a big dream. And I was ski racing away and I was learning and working towards my dream. This is where I had to learn with every single step because our time is limited, the dream is big, got to get after it. So I was in a ski race taking a step towards my dream on that day three months before the Olympics in a World Cup race. I was endeavoring to stick with a very fast super champion German racer, Claudia. And that was going pretty well. I was skiing behind Claudia. A thing about cross country ski racing, we work so hard on the flats. We work really hard on the uphills. But once we push over the top and into this aerodynamic tuck position, it's almost up to the skis. It's like, come on. And I was in this tuck position behind Claudia in the slipstream. And I was going to take a step towards my dream. I was going to take a step out and pass her. I took that step out. And she reached out of her tuck and shoved me. I fell right on the snow. Everyone skied away. I got back up. That step would later decide my fate. But in this moment, all I had was a choice, a choice to learn or a choice to have a new excuse in my quiver of excuses. And so I crossed the finish line. I could have protested, 
maybe tried to get her disqualified, injustice, poor me, but I was responsible, I was response able to learn something. Very simple. Next time, uh, what could I possibly do? What could I have learned here? I could pass wider and faster. So I took that home, didn't know what an impact it would have on my life until the Olympic final. Because I didn't race Claudia for months, even though I was always a little intimidated that I would have to square off against her on the start line. I didn't encounter her until the last race. I would possibly want to race Claudia again, the Olympic final. I'm on this start line, so green. I hadn't won anything at this point. And this is the third step that I want to share, which is belief. And we all know it's so important to believe in yourself. We all tell the kids to believe in themselves. It's a very common message that belief is important. But how exactly do we do that? I noticed on this day, on this start line of the Olympic final, that I had two voices in my head. A negative voice, very loud, very strong. You're not ready. You're not good enough. You can't do it. I don't know who you think you're fooling. Very strong voice. But luckily, I also had a positive voice. It was just very quiet. I had to listen very carefully to hear it. Because it was like, you can do it. <laughs> so quiet. What? <laughs> you can do it. It was almost like in the cartoons when there's a devil on one shoulder and a little angel on the other telling you what to do. I took control of the volume on these voices. I turned down the negative, no time for that. Turned up the volume on the positive until the sound of belief of you can do it flooded my mind, expanded into the whole stadium like a symphony on this sunny day in Italy. My chance to race in an Olympic final, which was a good thing because right after that, the gun went off and I was in the Olympic final. I skied really fast out of the start. I had a lead, which was great because no one can push you when you're in the front. <laughs> but over the climb, around the climb, Claudia took the lead. Once again, we're going to the downhill. Once again, I was in a tuck. Once again, behind Claudia, everything came into this moment. The big dream, the learning step, the belief. This time, I took a wide step. I passed her awkwardly wide. If you were there, you would have wondered where I was going. <laughs> <laughs> and I passed her extraordinarily fast. Cruising into the stadium, the last downhill, the sound in my head was like a kettle boiling. I was that focused. I got into the finishing stretch. I didn't look right. I didn't look left. I had a lock on that finish line of my focus. I saw the red line in the snow, and I realized I was going to cross it first. First, I thought, are you kidding me? <laughs> and secondly, I thought, I better put my hands up. <laughs> Wild times, you guys. Cross that line. Do you want to know the best part of winning the Olympics? There were a lot of good parts. It was a perfect, beautiful day, as I've described. Everything you could imagine about a perfect day in the mountains in Italy, winning the Olympic ski race, it was that. It was unbelievable. I really love hugs. I got a lot of hugs. <laughs> My teammates were there. My parents had traveled so far, watched this all unfold before their eyes with their kid. They were there to give me a big hug. That was an amazing part, not, still not the best part. I got dressed in this podium suit issued by Team Canada. I stood behind the podium waiting for my name to be announced. The, the Canadian, or English announcer, sorry, announced my name, and the Italian announcer announced my name, which I'll never forget. It was so fun. Dalla Canada, la campionessa olimpico. <laughs> Chandra Crawford. I jumped up on that podium. The podium was a great part. Because to me, it was like the best concert you've ever been to. I jumped up and down. I played my air guitar. My favorite song came on. I sang our national anthem at the top of my lungs. I watched the Canadian flag be raised. It was so amazing, but still not the best part. Because the best part 
was that I now have this platform to stand on to inspire even more young women through sport to raise their confidence, to be part of this big dream cycle of inspiration, to dream big, to take a learning opportunity, to step with learning every time, and to believe, to turn up the volume on belief. I have this souvenir to remind me of the whole experience, which is shaped like a CD, very appropriate, because it plays this soundtrack of inspiration on repeat. But I need your help to play the song that it plays. Can you clap for me? <laughs> Don't stop believing. Thank you. Thank you.